What's going on, Charlotte? It's your favorite Ken Folk J, my dog Trap Sid, No Advisory Podcast, bro. You already know what's going on, man. I'm with the guy, the king himself, but I'm going to pass him the mic. Trap, what we got to ask him, bro? I need you to tell us who you are, where you from, and what the fuck you do. What's up, everybody? My name is Dante Fuller. Um, I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, but I live in Charlotte. Um, I'm a writer and author. You got a writer and an author. Um, I looked at uh some of your work bro and i think that one of the things that stood out to me the most was when i saw that you were a poet um so can you dive into a little bit and tell us a little bit about what got you into writing and how you figured out that this was something that you, you were good at well i started writing when i was like 16 years old um what got me to writing was like just the skill i have to express how i feel to know what i want to say in a creative way and just write it down on paper and also what gave me the confidence to like tell people stories like what I write with short stories and poems and stuff is just like people's feedback on it like in high school I used to like read my poetry in front of the audience I did that in college as well and like doing that it gave me the confidence to just you know express how I feel and know that others can relate to how I feel as well let me ask you since since you know because i definitely agree that being able to write and and express how you feel is is definitely key what would you say um if you had to rate it how important do you feel like emotional intelligence is and and just being able to elaborate that i have to say it's like a 10 like a 10 out of 10 emotional intelligence is a must because i feel like a lot of people nowadays they forget like you know how to connect with people and you got to connect with someone on an emotional level and like you got to know how they're feeling know what they're like feeling at all times communicate how they're fi communicate how you're feeling vice versa and i feel like that will help you know your emotional intelligence enhance because you know that's how you have healthy relationships with anybody you have in your um, life shout out to the 49ers but i just want to know um your experience as being an african-american male on a predominantly white campus like how was that? well um long story with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like it it was a very good experience i came from wanting to be diverse and i'm gonna just be as real as i can be where i come from you know i was around a lot of my people of course and so, like, I just didn't want to restrict myself being around just black people. I wanted to get to know different types of people, you know, different types of races, cultural uh, backgrounds, all of that. But, like, seeing different um, backgrounds and stuff where people come from, it really opens your mind up a lot. And I feel like that's what helped me um, being at a very um, at a very public white school, of course, but then there was cons to it as well. You know, I've ran into people who were prejudiced, who were biased. Um, I've dealt with people I worked with who were prejudiced and biased as well. And so dealing with that, I just didn't understand until actually being in those situations that there are people who look at us as like a threat, as aggressive, as too blunt, outspoken. And it's like, and it's like, I don't see myself as that. It's just, you know, I don't understand why people view us that way, but it's just, that's just how it is. So it that's one of the things I struggle with being on campus is running into a few people who are like that. And, you know, that kind of, I wouldn't say it traumatized me, but it kind of like threatened me in some way. It's like, I'm scared to, you know, open my mouth and say something because I'm going to be viewed as aggressive or I'm going to be viewed as, you know, the, yeah. So it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of hard when you're like, you have those characteristics about yourself, where you come from and stuff and people just don't understand you. And it's like, you get so tired of trying to explain yourself. It's like, I'm not trying to come off that way and I'm not coming off that way, but it's like some people just don't understand. So Is there, do you think there's anything that maybe, um, going to a, a institution where there's a mix um, versus going to an HBCU? Like, do you feel like there's something that people who um, go to HBCUs, they're missing out on when they could have went to uh, a, P a PWI? 
Um, honestly, no, because I mean, the experience is the same. You get the same college experience and stuff. But I mean, in college, I'm pretty sure you'll learn about different cultures and backgrounds and stuff. So, I mean, while it is important to know um, different types of people, I don't, you know, hold it against anybody who wants to go to a HBCU. I mean, sometimes I wish I went to a HBCU myself because it's just the experience. <laughs> yeah, that and. That and you're around people who can relate to you and, you know, you don't have to deal with any type of, you know, bias or prejudice that comes your way. So you kind of segue into the second question that I was going to ask you, which was, do you feel like your experiences from being a student at UNCC, um, sometimes you can, what am I trying to say? Do you feel like your experiences relate to the works that you write? That's what helps me um, be more aware of who I am as a black man, because um, those experiences, I don't, you know, regret having those experiences, but at the same time, I just wish I didn't have to go through those experiences. And I'm not the only one that I've went to UNC Charlotte, that I've, uh, that someone went to school with me. I'm not the only one that has experienced that. So it's good to know that I'm not the only one who's experienced that type of bias or prejudice and, um, you know, I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm glad that I am a black man who's outspoken, who says how he feels. But one of the things that I just struggle with, that I, you know, I've always struggled with was just being expressive as a black man because we get judged a lot for expressing our emotions and stuff. And I've dealt with that a lot growing up. And so, like, now I don't care anymore but I still will deal with that backlash, of course, but it's like, it's to a point where it doesn't affect me, but it's bothersome because I can't express myself to certain people like how I want to, because they'll judge you. I definitely can relate though, bro, because as a black man, I do feel like, you know, if you try to explain how you feeling, um, a lot of people will kind of take that as a misconceived notion. Or if you don't, a lot of people will consider you nonchalant and, and try to put stigmas on you. So I definitely understand that. But um, talk about how you learning to be able to express yourself as a black man, how um, how much of a relief it was for you once you found that outlet. And if you were ever able to uh, pass that advice on to anybody else who might be in the same position. Like with all the poetry and stuff that I've done over the years, it's helped me you know, express myself more because a lot of people can relate to it. It's like my, it's like my safe space when I'm writing. I can say whatever I want to say without nobody telling me what I need to say or how I should write it. You know, it's like my safe space. I can say what I want, express how I want to express, and I don't have to hear nobody's shit, basically. So it opens a door because a lot of people who don't know how to express themselves they can read like my works and stuff and say, oh wow, that was deep. Like I wish I can have that courage to say what this man is saying. Right. You know, that's that's really the message I want to get out there is just to give people courage to just, you know, be able to express themselves. Have you ever thought about doing music? Like why why did you choose to go with the poetry and the writing instead of going with I ain't been confident in that. No. <laughs> <laughs> As a, as a poet, I feel like I have to ask you, who would you say um, is your ultimate inspiration or at least your top three poets that inspire you the most? I have to say Maya Angelou is my most inspirational one because she, she paved the way for a lot of writers, and I love her poetry. I've loved it since high school. She writes about stuff, you know, that's about herself, of course, but she writes in a way that's very creative and... I just can't put my finger on it to this day. I just love her writing. It's very soulful and it's very real. And, you know, that's what I love about myself as a writer. I'm very real and I come from the heart. I come from the soul, you know, but in a creative way, I express myself. It just comes natural. And I think that's why I can relate to her poetry as well. So, being that you are a writer, obviously you do like English. Um, who was one of your favorite teachers or one of the teachers that left the most impact on your life? All the way up until like high school. before high school or before college. Before college. Before college um. Damn, that's a good one. She's fine list. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't really say no. 
No teacher, really. I love all my English teachers, don't get me wrong, but no one really had made a huge impact on me. I mean, as far as, like, them, um, like, pushing me as a writer. I mean, not as a, ri- as a writer, but, like, in English, I mean, I really had no big impact. I'll say when I got to college, it was more impactful than high school. So, like, when I got to college, um, I was pushed by – a few of my professors, of course, when it came to writing, because it brought out another aspect that I didn't know I have. And so to this day, that sticks with me when it comes to me writing poetry and stuff. And so, you know, to this day, that leaves an impact on like when I write in the future. And my stuff. major, I did a double major. I did a major in sociology and creative well, English and creative If writing. you weren't a writer, what would you be doing? I don't know, because I also um, I, I'm doing like social work stuff. As well as writing, so I really don't know. So look, bro, big question. Um, as I guess when you when you writing and kind of touching back on how you said like it gives you an avenue to express yourself for the people who don't um necessarily understand you when you say it verbally or without writing it down. Do you feel like there's something that people who are more judgmental do you think there's a a, a, le- a message they can receive from what you write in like do you try to write and give them a message or do you think that there's something that they could learn from um what you're writing down when it comes to that i mentioned like people who are very judgmental and stuff like i'm not allowing someone to be vulnerable and express themselves like the message i usually put in like you know my writings is you know this person is in pain they're emotional They're going through something, and they just need support. They need love. They need, you know, respect. And they need that courage, like that support, meaning they need that courage from people around them to allow them to express themselves. Because if they can't express themselves, that's just going to lead to more trouble. Have you ever, um, I don't know, because I feel like it's it's different for poetry. So, you know, like how rappers get put on the spot and they freestyle. Is there, um, have you ever been able to come up with a poem, like, off the top of your head? Or, you know, because I'm basically about to ask you to give us one unless you can give us something like that you've written down before for the people that haven't heard your work or anything like that. I can't really come up with one off the top of my head. I have to write it down on paper before I say it out loud. I I just wanted to know because I'm a little bit nosy. Like some people feel like dancing is intimate for them. Um, Some people feel like, you know, music is intimate for them. Obviously, you're a writer. Do you feel like your works are intimate to you um, as far as, like, certain things? You know, you maybe wouldn't necessarily want a significant other to read at a certain point until you were, like, necessarily ready, if that makes sense. So, like, when I talk about, like, when I write about stuff that's intimate to me, um, I don't really think about, I really don't think about, like, if I'm writing about somebody, I don't really think about, like, oh, am I ready to, you know, show this to people, how this person will feel i don't really think about that when i'm writing it i don't think about it until after the fact but it's like at the same time what i've learned to have confidence in is that this is your story this is your truth this is your experience and this is how you feel no one can take that away from you and i mean of course you know the other person knows what happened like if you have a situation with somebody you decide to talk about it or write about it they know what happened but it's just you know you know, people use art to, you know, talk about personal experiences and stuff. So that's what I do a lot. I use my personal experiences to talk about, you know, a lot of stuff and use and put it in my art. So, I mean, I don't have no shame in that. It's my truth. It's my story. And, you know, I'm writing based off of what happened, my perspective on it, and how I felt. So I don't have no shame in it. Let's talk a little bit about, like, negative backlash. Um, obviously, there's always going to be haters out there. They're always going to have something negative to say. What What is your response it, to that negativity? Um, I did receive some negative backlash. Like, what I've learned about being a writer is that, you know, writing is not going to be perfect. Right. There's going to be errors. There's going to be mistakes. And, you know, some people told me, oh, you made some grammar errors and stuff. I know a lot of famous authors and writers who made some grammar spelling mistakes. I mean, things are just not going to be perfect. So that's what I just had to accept. You know, I am a perfectionist when it comes to like writing and stuff. So I'm working on not trying to be one. Mm -hmm. So like usually when I'm done writing something, I'll look and saw that I make a mistake and I'm like, oh, shit, 
I have to go back and like change it again and again. So that's something I have to work on. But like, you know, that's really backlash I get. It's just, you know, you know, it's just not knowing um, the mistakes you made. And just also when you hear people say, well, you made some grammar errors and stuff. People sometimes they make grammar errors based off of the fact like their writing style is different. They might use slang. They might right. use different. They might word things differently. Because I've seen in a lot of writings with black writers as well. So. Well, I released my first published book, Robbed, um, in uh, July of 2019. Um, I wrote the story in college, but I kind of like tweaked it a little bit, made a little um, editing, and then released it. So um, the book is about a young boy. He is in a situation where his father is a alcoholic and so like the the you know the drinking got worse to where he had to move in with his aunt because his dad was very abusive when he gets drunk and it goes back to the fact that you know the mother's not available in the household and that's like a whole different story with the mother and the father that causes him to drink a lot and so the son had to move in with his aunt. You know, he lives a happier life. He's not, you know, being abused, of course. Um, he meets someone, gets a girlfriend. He's in high school. And so things get worse when the father gets out of rehab. You know, he's in rehab for drinking, but the problem that's there that caused him to drink, it doesn't go away. It doesn't right. go away. So he looks for the son. And, you know, around the time he looks for the son, he founds his mom. And so things get tragic from there. I'll just say that. Stop me if I'm, you know, getting too mm -hmm. deep or anything. But is that a story that you personally can relate to, or is it just something that out of the creativity within you that you were able to put together? Well, I can relate from that story. I can relate to like dealing with, you know, a relative who has a drinking problem and acts a certain way when they're drunk. But I can't relate to like being abused. Okay. Yeah, while while the relative is drunk, I haven't went through that. You can purchase it on Lulu.com. You can purchase it on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles and Goodreads and Google Play. We we know about Rob. You you told us about that um being your first book and everything. Um, we also know about the uh, I Let Go the poem. Um, what other works have you already done? Um, and what would you say is your favorite or your most? Um, it it took the most of your your creativity to put to put together i have to say like i did a documentary it was notable locally um it's called discover to uncover i did this when i was like 20 years old so I, it was like six not six years sorry i filmed it five years ago and it was released in the spring of 2016. Okay. um i'll have to say like those are like one of my most creative things because I spent like my blood sweat and tears into that documentary the message that I was trying to get across for that documentary is to just you know be who you are not be afraid to express yourself not be afraid to um let down your guard tell your life story regardless of what anyone says that really that documentary at the time was really just courage to give other people to just tell their story, live their truth, and just express who they are in the most confident, um, realest way ever. So I didn't know about the documentary. That's interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to tap in and, and watch that as something that I'm interested in knowing more about. Um, but I want to go back a little bit and talk about the poem, I Let Go. Yeah. I read that on Wattpad. Y'all know I'm a Wattpadder. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, go look it up, okay? Um, amazing. So I want you to talk to us a little bit about it, um, motivation behind it, and I know that you said you wanted to do a little spiel from it. So if you could please bless us with a little the snippet. Poem I let go. It's about just learning to not be perfect. I think the biggest problem we all have, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we all have imperfections that we don't want to express mm -hmm. we have issues with wanting everything to be perfect and that's what the book not the book I'm sorry the poem <laughs> I'm thinking about Rob but that's what the poem is about you know you know like in the poem talks about you know forgetting their chapstick or like you know forgetting to turn on this exit or like 
putting on the world, putting you know a face on the world. Like I have a perfect family, I have perfect friends, I have a perfect relationship. And the poem is basically saying like, no, everything is not perfect. You know, I've been treated this way by relatives, I've been treated this way by friends, and I had to leave them behind. I had to you know do certain things that that were toxic, like chasing after people who didn't you know fight for me, and like loving people who didn't love me in return and so like when you're when you're able to accept that you are imperfect it feels real good you know but it doesn't stop with feeling good in that moment with being imperfect you have to keep doing it like every single day because another situation can expose you to showing you that you are imperfect and I think a lot of us have struggled with that I have struggled with that myself too because I've been in a lot of situations to where I was very ashamed, I was embarrassed, and I was scared to say something about it because I just, I believe that I have to have this, I have to have a certain life, I have to have a certain way of, you know, having things in my life, and it's like, no, everything is not going to be perfect. And also, like, after I read the poem, I, you know, this poem does dive into a a subject that is going to be relating to my upcoming project. I'm going to be talking about with you guys as well. Yeah, so on another interview, I kind of messed up on this poem because I I have it memorized, but when I read it, I jumble sometimes on the words. So I'm just mm-hmm. going to warn y'all right now. In the meantime, we're going to run a COVID poem. How you been holding up with that? COVID? Lockdowns and shutdowns. And that, that, this virus affected me in a lot of ways. Um it kind of affected me mentally as well because like when this first happened back in March, I, you know, I couldn't see my family for like a few months and that kind of bothered me because I was just, you know, with the virus, I wasn't really knowledgeable what this virus was capable, capable of doing. So I just wanted to make sure I was keeping myself safe along with my family and like, you know, that affected my job, having to work from home, Having to have my paycheck decreased a little bit at times, it was just horrible. Talk about it. <laughs> when you're by yourself, when you're isolated, when you, it's everything shut down, you have no choice but to think and reflect about yourself, you know. So. I tried exercising at home. That was a dub. I ain't doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just stayed to myself. I um, watched videos on how to improve myself. I drove around a few times really did all those things really just to keep myself Mm -hmm. occupied so this poem is called i let go staring at the grass that is covered in frost i let go of the fact that the grass is going to be wet an accidental cut on my skin from shaving my facial hair i let go accepting that i'm going to have a scar for a while Burn the chicken that was cooking on the stove. I cooked before, but doing chicken was my first try. I let go of being hard on myself and realized I can do better next time. Forgot my chapstick at home while rushing to leave for work. I let go of wanting to go back home to get it and left my lips ashy and chapped for the day. Missed my exit on the highway because I was thinking about what I'm going to eat for lunch today. I let go of being mad at myself and just rerouted. Cried on an incredibly special day of mine. When I tried to make everything so perfect and fine, I let go of trying to be happy and and let myself be sad. Tried to take my own life when everything seemed so dark. I let go of that decision and fight my way to see the light. Mind plagued with suicidal thoughts, thought I was crazy, thought I needed medicine or a psychiatric unit to lay in. I let go of calling myself insane and seek therapy to be okay. Hearing people say all the time, you'll get over it or you need to let it go. I let go of what people say and let myself heal at my own pace. Had to leave people, had to leave some people I love behind. Too much toxic energy was weighing down on my life. I let go and realized love does not equal 
being treated shitty. Chased after some people who did not chase after me. Kept trying to fight in some relationships when those people were not fighting with me. I let go and nurture my self-worth. Professional life has been a mess. I just want to get away sometimes and rest. I let go of workaholic tendencies and became more obsessed in self-care routines. Life is running in constant circles. I fight every day to be the best I can be. Reality is something I always neglect. I let go of trying to be perfect. That says a lot yeah. within itself, bro. Like, it's so many questions that I could have asked just knowing that that's what you wrote. Yeah. But, like, hearing how you expressed it and what you expressed and how you handled it moving forward, mm -hmm. it, it says a lot about, you know, just the places you've come from and the growth in between and where you ended up at. So, yes. Um, that's, that's definitely some dope work, bro. Thank you. Definitely. I've been working on a project you know, during the pandemic and stuff that I'm going to release on January 2nd, which is next Saturday, I believe. I'm not going to say what it is. It's the only thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't that. <laughs> but I'm going to release it on January 2nd. Um, it's The project is really about um, a young black man. His name is Jay Sean. His nickname is Jazz. Really, it's about him coming to terms with the fact that he is an imperfect black man. He's learning how to express himself. He's learning how to be vulnerable. And he's learning how to challenge himself to grow with all the situations he's dealt with, you know. So the project is really going to be really dope. I really hope, you know, a lot of people, you know, be on the lookout for it and, you know, like I said, a lot of black men, I believe, will relate to this person. And, you know, me and this person, we have a few life experiences that are similar. So, you know, when this project drops, I really hope everybody checks it out. Um, like I said, January 2nd, I'm not going to say what it is, but yeah. But it's really the, the subject is really about learning how to be imperfect, learning how to accept that you are imperfect. And that's what um, Jazz is learning. I so. will, um, the only thing I can ask you, bro, is what is a, a gym that you've gained along the way from all of the self-development and the growth mm -hmm. within yourself um, that you could pass along to, to anybody, including your, your, yourself in the past? Like, what is, what is one gym that you feel like you picked up that you just absolutely would love? I have to say, like... The gym, the biggest thing I struggled with was just learning how to um, be confident in myself and loving myself because I struggled with that a lot growing up. I didn't know how to, was never taught how to. You know, I relied on people to give me that strength to do that and I shouldn't have to. Yeah. So becoming an adult, I realized that the only love that you can give yourself is you no one can give you that no one can give you happiness no one can give you confidence no one can give you the you know the voice that you're trying to fill you can only do that and that's one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn and I'm surprised that I've learned that at, you know being 25 of course but I mean when you, you know when you just do a lot of self-reflection and stuff and you've been exposed to a lot of situations they put you in them it puts you in a position to really look at yourself and you know loving yourself is hard it's not easy it is. it's not easy you know people have that idea of thinking what loving yourself is and you know it's not being in a relationship to get that love it's not being around people to get that love you have to learn how to you know give that to yourself within cuz it's like if you're if you can't love yourself, like, how you going? Yeah, how you gonna have healthy relationships? How you gonna like, you know, know how to be around people when you can't give yourself that love, that confidence, that self respect, that yeah. people that you're looking for people to give you. The yeah, advice yeah. I can give to people, you know, who are you know younger than me, older than me, or the same age as me, is that you know, 
you just got to keep getting up every single day. Keep loving yourself. Make sure you do. Um, make sure you find what makes you happy within. Make sure you give yourself the confidence. You know, whether it's just putting a smile on your face, whether it's just, you know, just taking the time out to just learn who you are. And I feel like when you learn who you are, you're just by yourself. I feel like you'll know, okay, well, I can do this. I can love myself and stuff. And that's one of the things that is being talked about in the upcoming project is just learning how to be alone, learning how to just give yourself that care, that respect, that love that you shouldn't find in nobody else. You can only give yourself that. Especially learning how to be kind, learning how to be kind to yourself too. That's important as well. And that's one of the things when it comes to the subject of imperfection, you have to be kind to yourself and just say to yourself, I'm imperfect. Okay, I messed up this day. I can try again. You got to learn how to be kind to yourself because if you're not kind to yourself, then you're just going to keep being hard on yourself. I think it's interesting, too, how, you know, you're writing this through COVID, through the pandemic, through a quarantine. um, And for a lot of people, quarantine is what allowed them to really Mm self-reflect. So I think that's another point that people can relate to. With the poem? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got January 2nd. We know that it's a secret project coming. Mm-hmm. You can't tell us nothing else about it. Just January. Nope, I gave y'all what's going to be about. I gave y'all the person that's going to be about. And I said that me and this person were similar in some ways. That's yeah, all Tell I'm everybody, um, you yes. know, like let's, your let's social let's... media and where they can find you at, where they can find your old work at, your new upcoming project at, because I'm going to be on alert for that. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, well, first things first, when I do release this project, y'all guys going to spread the word, right? Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Definitely. I'll follow you, so I Okay. It. All right. Only fans. I can't. If it's a secret only fans, you buy yourself. No, only fans. Okay. All right. So. So, like, to piggyback on the documentary, like I said, my mindset has changed a little bit. Because I was 20 years old when I filmed it, so I'm 25. So, my mindset has changed a little bit. One thing I can say that I grew from that documentary was knowing that, um, you know, I felt like in the documentary I was trying to be perfect in some ways. Because, you know, I try to make it seem like I'm just this hill person, like, yeah. towards the hill towards the end of the documentary when really I was still going through some shit at the time. Yeah. The next year, the year after that, I was still going okay through. With being imperfect. Yeah. So I didn't know that at the time it's just like, I'm just revealing this message of having courage to being who you are. But one thing I've learned this year, this year was being kind to myself with being imperfect. So I just wanted to point that out. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So you guys can find me on Instagram. My Instagram name is uh, underscore Fuller with two R's. Um, you can find my documentary Discover to Uncover, even though it's old. <laughs> you can find it on YouTube. Um, my first published book, um, Rob. You can find it on Lulu.com. You can find it on Amazon, um, Barnes and Nobles, Goodreads, Google Play, um, and what else? I let go. You can find it on. Uh, Wattpad, of course. Um, you can find it on my Instagram link because it's still on there. It won't be there for long because, um, you know, of course, my project coming yeah. out. <laughs> so you can read that poem. Yeah, you can read that poem on there. So, so last 30 seconds, man. We got to do a no advisory style. Last 30 seconds. Say whatever you want to say. Pop your, Pop your shit. shit. Let's get it. Damn, I don't got nothing to say. <laughs> I don't got nothing to say. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. You guys let me come on the show yeah. to talk about my uh, projects and stuff. I really do appreciate it. Appreciate it's been a blessing. Absolutely. Black excellence, of course. So yeah. I appreciate it. Very well educated and very well versed. This was a great interview. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Thank you. January 2nd. January 2nd. January 2nd. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, y'all already know it's your girl Try to see in here with Kim Folk J and our very special guest, Jay Fuller. We out.